Hey everybody, it's Tifoni here. Uh, today's rambling about is going to be on one of my favorite modules. It's going to be the Qubit Electronics Data Bender, a 14 HP glitch effects monster for your rack. Uh, here's the disclaimer. I picked this one up used from a Canadian seller. I have no affiliation with Qubit whatsoever. This video isn't sponsored or anything. Uh, it's just my own series and my own thoughts. So more importantly than all that, this is what it sounds like. God, the data bender just sounds so good. Okay, so the rambling about format will surely always be evolving and always be different depending on the module too. But I want to always include a demonstration section in every video because I think it would be pretty boring to just play one song, listen to some dork talk for five minutes and then play another song and then just be done so hopefully we can actually use the time to uh teach if no one else but myself something about the module so but the question for me in a module like this is how deep do i get in the squid sample video it was very hard to know where to stop because that thing is a full system in a <laughs> module uh versus say like uh, the Steve's MS-22 video where I think it was best to just do every single feature of the panel, just show the filter, uh, something a lot more digestible when it comes to just being a filter. Uh, but the data bender is definitely going to fall into the too deep to demo everything category. So I'm aiming to like, we'll cover or we'll aim to make like a quick start guide rather than trying to get into every single detail. And I'm going to miss some stuff. If you're favorite data bender feature is missed let us know in the comments because uh yeah i'm not going to be able to cover everything this thing is deep lots of your rack is deep yeah with that being said i am going to start and stop in macro mode as indicated by the blue button uh, i won't get into the micro mode as indicated with the green button uh, but just know that in micro mode, the bend and break functions are a little bit different and you can do a little more tweaking like under the microscope if you will before i get into it before i go through all the controls in the panel let's get back into macro mode patch that i'm going to demo with today is pretty straightforward because i want to focus on the module and not making the song that the data bender will be processing so we are using the roland mc 101 because it has good sounds it has onboard sequencer it has everything to make a quick 
that'll loop for us to slice up today, and then I am using its MIDI output to clock PAMS, which is in turn <laughs> clocking the data bender, and I believe that's the only thing that's going to be clocking for now, yeah. So that's the uh, layout. We are running through the Overseer. I don't think I'm going to use it for any of my patches, but if I do, it is there. Uh, it does Modus Versio. Uh, everything goes through a compressor so that I can tighten things up a little bit. Uh, that's the Messer compressor. And so there's no, I'm just trying to not have a big drop off between my voice and the instrumentation and hopefully normalize some stuff because sometimes there's no pop filter. There's no, uh, all of those things that I just want to tighten up with a little compression. So that is the patch and let's go over the data benders panel. And that being said, let's get a little closer. I think some of the labeling on the data bender is a little confusing. I think this is kind of one of my complaints with like a lot of your rack stuff. Um, like I would always name so much of this stuff <laughs> differently. Like even when I was learning like uh, a filter, referring to a filter as a VCF, like when you're starting out, I think stuff like that is really confusing. Like, yes, it's modulatable would be a better way to describe a VCF, right? Like if you don't understand how control, or sorry, if you don't understand how you can control the filter with voltage, then what is a VCF? Is it different from a normal low pass or am I, is it a bandpass filter? Like, anyway, that's just like naming conventions. I think uh, your rack has some shortcomings <laughs> when it comes to, but uh, obviously what do I know? So uh, let's get into the, uh, what data, sorry, what Qubit says is the initial not positions. So they actually don't say to run it on mix on full. Let me bring in the data bender first. So it's, what they suggest is you put the time at the middle and these things are connected to the clock and the repeats is a division of that clock, I believe. Let's go th through the panel first. So, okay, they suggest mix is like 75%. I always keep it at 100% because I want my slices to actually like be able to stop the loop and if the timing gets a little like out of whack it can be really weird to hear uh, the non data bender sound coming on top of that so yeah it's time at noon repeats all the way down so first knob is time quoting from the manual sets the sample period for incoming audio to be processed so if it's really short or really long, you might find that the your loop isn't the same time as your buffer and it'll skip. So what I do is just keep it at noon. That sounds like it's doing the whole buffer without giving us any stuttering. Although so does the shortest setting, but that's okay. So the clock I'm sending it If you increase the speed of the clock, I'll give you that as an example. So you hear it's like the buffer isn't making it to the end before it repeats. So if we make it really short, like the buffer is restarting, right? So you want to keep this at noon and find yourself a division. And I'm cheating. Well, not cheating. I'm changing the clock by changing pans. So we're keeping it at quarter note pulses and we are keeping the time at noon. So then there's the repeats knob, which divides the audio buffer into smaller subsections of audio. Turn it up for glitch stutter. So we'll turn that up now. The th thing with the repeats knob is it's not a time divider in essence. And yes, if you crank it, it's too small to change, but it doesn't freeze, right? So like, Yes, it's chopping it into smaller slices, but it's sort of like a feedback knob, if that makes sense. Or at least that's how I use it or I think about it. So what I do or I like to do in performance is like keep this all the way off. Let your loop go. And then use my repeat knob to bring in some effects. So if I'm playing. Like that. So 
that's repeat. Uh, mix, we just talked about, controls the balance between the input and the buffer. I always keep it on full because if you have it on half and we do some of this, I mean, that, that's cool. Like, everything's valid, obviously, but like, if I'm making it stutter, I want it to stutter the whole thing for my use. But yeah, I mean, everything's. The other, so I'll get into when we're modulating it and bringing some randomness, some probabilities, some like coming and going of the buffer. You could like have the data bender be in some crazy patch and totally unmixed and then bring that in. So we'll just crank up all the knobs and then we'll use the mix as our way of crossfading. So we just bring it in. Right? I didn't modulate the parameters. I'll just keep it going crazy and then bring in the whole thing, right? So yeah, there's so much you can do with Data Bender, obviously. Uh, so the mode knob I talked about before, we're in blue, we're in macro mode. We're not gonna go into green mode, which is the micro mode today. We're just gonna stay in blue mode. But just know that green is micro, and if it sounds weird, that is why. So break is on or off, right? The way the relationship between bend and break for these ones is like there's CV knobs that are like internally normalized to five volts, I believe. So so if the blue light is on for bend, and we'll bring in our mix, and we bring in some bend, there's some bend. That's the bend effect. So it's still on, but if we turn the value, value down all the way, uh, we won't have any bend. So if I crank it up, we hear some bend. And we press it off, and now it's completely turned off. So when we talk about the CV and modulation part again, there's different ways to do it, right? So do I leave my CV up here and then modulate it turning on and off? Or do I leave it all the way on and modulate the knob control? You can see that I'm not covering up my fat fingers. But yeah, I'm gonna leave this on for now and we'll turn it off with the little pot. So same goes for break, where right now it's on, but the knob is all the way down so we don't hear it. And then if we bring it in. That's what it sounds like. And then again, turn it off, crank it, nothing happens. Turn it on, there it is again. So the way they describe bend and break are, there's the bend, automated tape medium inspired manipulations. Break emulates malfunctioning digital audio devices. And these all, as indicated by this graphic that like points to all the values, these things all have a relation to the time division. Like your buffer is running, uh, it's gonna change the breaks. They're little glitches right now. But as I change my time, right, it affects everything that it's connected to, right? And then corrupt is a little different. So there's no off mode for corrupt. Corrupt, if you want to turn corrupt off, you have to turn this all the way down. So there's a couple different modes for corrupt. Blue, which is decimate. Uh, they describe it as varying bit crush and down sampling effects. This, I love this. Just, I, I'm not gonna say I love this to every single effect here, but like, yes, <laughs> that sounds so good. Okay, and then there's green, which is dropout. So audio dropouts increasing across the knob. So it's just. We're locked. Yeah, that's cool. And then I really like this yellow, which is destroy, so all the way off. And then we'll bring in some soft saturation. This one's awesome. And then it gets into hard clipping. Yes. Oh, data bender, so good. Sorry, I won't say that every time. All right, purple is DJ filter. So what I said before about there's no off mode, you got to be careful when this is all the way down and you cycle through them because if the volume is all the way off for the other corrupt modes, when you get to DJ filter, it's like the knob is turned all the way down. So right now I just have like the hair of low pass. 
right? I love DJ filters, but I probably, well, I shouldn't say probably, I rarely use this one. And only because there's the overseer right beside it. But it sounds really good. I just, yeah, I wish there was a way to turn off the crib, right? So I go low pass and then I can just hit it and then be unmute it or bypass the filter. But yeah, here's another sweep because I talked over the other one, sorry. Oh, sounds really good. Uh, there's cat hair in my eye. Now. Okay, let's go to the last one is Vinyl Sims. So I understand, turn that all the way off first. I understand these are actually changeable in the uh, online settings, I believe. Uh, I know the uh, DJ filter is like a recent addition in a firmware too. So if you know something about that, let us know in the comments. But yeah, here's the Vinyl Sim. SP404 enjoyers eat your heart out okay and then there is the freeze which is a staple of qubit modules they all seem to love freeze and freeze is cool uh let's go some freeze and this is affected by the time you can make it really short by cranking the time knob up and then if you grab it it's just gonna stutter like you gotta always be clocking the data bender right like if you're doing it by ear it's just like those stutters aren't like everything's valid obviously if i haven't said that a million times already i'm gonna say it a million and one times like you can do whatever the hell you want in your rack and uh i'm certainly not gonna be the one to tell you not do it but i think like it sounds best under a clock it sounds best synced to your other gear so uh, right now you'll see it pulsing to the clock that i am sending from pams but if you aren't clocked that way so external clock is in white or internal is in blue. And yeah, just I'd use an external clock, I'd say. Just 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 don't. <laughs> so if you're in internal clock mode, the time knob will divide the clock rate. So that's how that will look. I don't know. I you can do this. You can do whatever the heck you want. I, <laughs> it's valid, but I will be clocking it with with PAMS. And then shift functions. So there's shift functions, and I don't... The problem is I don't know where everything is at. This is like the classic Eurorack button combo problem for me, right? I hold shift, and I don't know where I'm at and how this is going to change it. So I don't want to touch it, but I'm going to tell you for this video uh, what they all do. So bring that in so shift and time is the glitch windowing which changes the windowing of the audio buffer i'm gonna leave mine as is uh shift and repeats is the led dimmer you know we, we can change that so we crank it they're bright as they go if we dim it they're as dark as they go there you go see we're being brave <laughs> Shift and mix is stereo enhancement. That's actually cool. So I'm running this in mono, and I often have to run stuff in mono because of this recording setup. I sum down to mono, unfortunately. Uh, but if you want to do some stereo enhancement, I would definitely crank the mix. Hold shift, crank the mix. Uh, 
shift and bend knob attenuates the bend CV input. That's a macro mode only. I use the attenuator beside it. I'm not going to attenuate it internally with the shift function, that's for sure. Uh, shift and corrupt knob is a corrupt attenuator. Same deal. Same for the break, which I missed. So break, shift, corrupt, all attenuated by holding shift and turn. So shift and break button, pressing it, it toggles between the stored and unique but enough. Shift and bend changes the stereo behavior, toggles between shared and unique buffer manipulations for each channel. That's really cool. You can have different stuff going on in each channel. I'm going to find as is, but very cool. Uh, shift and break, restore default settings, restore the default settings. I mean, pick the module up used, you might want to do that. Uh, shift and corrupt, corrupt buffer as buffer reset. It toggles the gate input function to act as a secondary input to reset the buffer. Again, too much for me. Uh, shift and freeze toggles the between momentary and latching behaviors for freeze. So right now I have it in latching, but if I go to freeze, hit shift, it's momentary, so I have to hold it. That's cool. Switch it back just so I know. Yeah. And then shift and clock uh, changes the gate behavior. Toggles between momentary and latching behaviors for the gate inputs. So that's cool. Actually, yeah. And I think mine are in latching at the moment. So sending them a gate in the gate input will turn them on and turn them off. It's not momentary. <laughs> you don't hold gates to leave them open, which I think is, uh, is cool. And then last is shift mode, uh, corrupt off offerings, toggles the ability, toggles availability between the old corrupt effects and the new corrupt effects. So maybe let's go over the corrupt effects, corrupt effects, just for fun. So hit mode. And now I think we're in the old corrupt effects. Yeah. Yeah, there's only three in the old mode. Pretty cool. All the more, more things to make a mess with. Nope. Okay, back to new craft effects, which includes that new filter. Yeah, that's the panel of data bender. There's CV inputs for CV and gate, like I mentioned, and let's just do those quick. So what I said before about uh, the different ways to modulate them, uh, I'm not going to send gates for this demo to turn them on and off. What I'm going to do is leave them on and send them LFOs. That will increase the value, right? So all the way off, and then the alpha will come in and turn it up. So set that to an alpha first down. Yeah, uh, I love the data bender. I couldn't say enough good things about it. So uh, I'm Tifoni. Thanks for watching. Take care, and I'll talk to you soon.